Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Grand Boulevard Coalition. Hi, I'm your host, uh, Bamani Obadelli. The Grand Boulevard Coalition is a drug-free uh, prevention program uh, sponsored by SAMHSA. Um, working in the Grand Boulevard community with the focus on curbing and preventing underage drinking and drugging. Um, today, we have a, a, uh, a dynamic uh, young brother. I won't say young brother because I know he's younger than me. Uh, younger than I am, should I say. Um, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> uh, Amari Charles, who's a social worker um, by trade. Uh, and he, uh, we're going to discuss today our topic. We're going to discuss violence prevention. And we're going to talk about some substance abuse issues and the roles of parents involved in the community. Um, and so, uh, without further ado, Omar, how are you, man? I'm okay. I'm okay. Thanks for, you know, taking the opportunity to invite me here as a, you know, community forum to discuss a lot of these issues. There's some really, really hurting people out here. And, you know, hopefully today, you know, people will gain uh, some sort of insight so, and resources. Yeah. So how long have you been a social worker? About four years. So. Four years. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah. uh, I understand you uh, you went to UC Berkeley? Yeah, I did. Undergrad. 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 Mm -hmm. And then you got your master's from the University of Chicago? Yes, yes, indeed. SSA? Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, there are a lot of great, great, great minds have come out of SSA, I must tell you. Um, there are a lot of folks I know that are dynamic in the social work field, so you've been taught well. Well, I can say, <laughs> I mean... You know, very much a great school. I can agree with you on that. But as much as what I know about social work is life experience. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, and that's a good thing. Um, and and, and sometimes, you know, I always say theory is one thing, but experience and and that direct knowledge of of, of what happens um, in the community and in your life experiences. Are, are much greater. That's just my opinion. You know, that's just my opinion, anyhow. Uh, but. So, um, I'll just mention a couple of our partners tonight. I should mention all of our partners um, in the Grand Boulevard Coalition. We have Recovery 2000, Ms. Izetta Walton. Um, we have the Institute for Positive Living, uh, Reverend Maurice Coverson, the Bronzeville Community Clubhouse, uh, Mr. John Cook, um, our faith community partner, Greater Harvest Missionary Baptist Church, Ms. Lori Rainwright, our um, local government partner, the Third Ward Alderman, Pat Dow. Um, and Ms. Krista Hamilton of Centers for New Horizon is also one of our partners. Um, again, I'm your host tonight, Bamani Obadelli. This is a live show, 312-738-1060, uh, 312-738-1060, um, the, the Grand Boulevard Coalition, and we're discussing drug-free communities, mentoring, um, underage drinking and drugging, and parental involvement. So, Amari, let's just get right into it. So, okay. um, you know, what are, listen, so we, we, we're in Chicago. I've, I've kind of been on a tangent in that. And as I sit here and talk to you today, um, we've now have our 3,060th shooting in the city of Chicago. Uh, the murder rate is somewhere between 540 um, to 542 um, at this point. Um, there are six communities that we talked about um, in the past that have been overwhelmingly um, affected with the, this, this level of violence um, and shootings. Now, you have um, the police department say there are just 1,400 people. They know who the 1,400 people are, and um, they're, the, they're the ones who are at the root of all this. But I think there's something, and, and I, okay, I'll respect that. But I think there's something else at hand. I just think that there's there's a deeper, um, a deeper issue. I think there's a um, 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 uh, th there's something more than just 1,400 people out there who, at any given moment, may go off what my friend um, Mark Allen from Black Wall Street calls these walking time bombs. So, what do you say, what say you about the stats, Chicago? for the last two years at least. And now I'm a lifelong Chicagoan, so mm -hmm. I will say, and I know there are people who will tell you that we used to have seven, 800, 900 murders. That is true. But what was different between then and now, they weren't shooting children exactly. and innocent women. And, exactly. a, and a 71 year old grandfather watering his lawn um, and two bloods riding by on the bike 
and rob him, then shoot him. So the, 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 those were the diff. This that was different. Those are the difference. The, the different dynamics between exactly. now and then. So what's exactly. in you, Mark? Okay, so to dive in it a little bit, I would like to uh, first, you know, address some of the numbers or whatnot. So in regards to the numbers, uh, one would like to point out that it's an invisible war. Okay. Okay. I mean, in every major city, even beyond uh, Chicago, you got places like Detroit, New Orleans, Baltimore, Newark. Every year, it's the same um, cities. Now, unfortunately, you have more people who die here on U.S. soil than there's an actively declared war in Iraq or Afghanistan. Okay. Mm -hmm. And public policy has yet to address it. OK, and because of the lack of um, addressing the issue or setting the public agenda on these particular issues, you have a lot of people who are out there hurting, mm. possibly from undiagnosed PTSD. OK, so they were hurt, whether it was in their household. Tell, tell, tell the viewers what PTSD stands uh, for. PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder yeah. okay and what that is is um a response after an event from trauma that has happened a traumatic response that your body automatically has rather it is an extra adrenaline rush or being vigilant or being a little more shaky or afraid or having anxiety about, you know, specific things that are associated with the traumatic event at hand, okay? And so a lot of people out there may self-medicate. They may try to escape it by consuming drugs and alcohol. And unfortunately, what's indicative of the bigger problem out there with youth getting involved in alcohol or drugs at 10, 11, 12, is that there's something going on either in a household or the community that they may not necessarily have a positive outlet to address these issues. So they may very well self-medicate. Yeah, stay right there. So okay. that has been my premise, right? That, okay. that, that, that there is an underlining pain Okay. that many of these young trauma versus whether they, you know, they've seen... People being victimized, whether it's beaten, uh, they 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 they've seen people being shot in the community. Yeah, exactly. um, the level of violence is perpetrated. Um, they they've seen their mothers being abused. Mm -hmm. um, the lack of a father presence in the home, and, and I don't think that many people realize that, you know, if children witness abuse, if children are victims of abuse. Um, and if they don't get the proper counseling, which, which is going to bring me back to the social work side, in 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 Israel, in in Iraq, when they went through the Iraqi War and they uh, murdered all of those soldiers, you know, we defeated the soldiers, but then there were some innocent folks who also lost their lives over in Iraq, right? They call in it Afghanistan, collateral, collateral, collateral damage, damage, right? Yeah. But the U.S. government went in with six billion dollars to help rebuild exactly brought in counselors brought in infrastructure brought in all these different things to help make those people whole and we're still paying right so when you look in the african-american community and to the point of the, the the trauma and and certainly our young people are uh smoking loud they popping mollies they drinking lean and and whatever else the new drug is of the day i mean they they all you know <laughs> they they don't try anything it seems to me i mean i'm i'm really you know sometimes amazed when i hear it um but the 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 criminal the the criminal acts hmm. i just had a gentleman today it told me that a 13 and 14, so getting to your point, okay. a 13 and 14 year old robbed him on 47 and King Drive, pulled a gun on him and robbed him. He said he couldn't have been no, no, no older than 13 or 14. Okay. Now, I, so there, there's a splash of these robberies that are taking place, um, breaking in. I mean, so we're literally in our community in war zones, right? So, in your opinion, what should be the response from the conscious community folks? 
the social workers, the churches, the community organization, the parents? What should be the response? Okay, so in that case, you know, I have uh, several answers to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, what you were alluding to uh, is what we call as social workers the adultification of a minor. Okay. And, you know, that could happen in a household first, you know, where the male may not be around or the female may not be around. And you may have a child assume roles that are normally to an adult. Okay. Now, if the parents aren't around and let's say the oldest brother is charged with making sure that the family is fed and protected or whatnot and that adult is absence from the picture and of course you know you got a 13 14 year old kid they can't go out and get no job right. so nine times out of ten whatever they're gonna do perhaps in desperation is going to nine times out of ten be illegal in nature unfortunately yeah okay and that's just uh my opinion what could faith leaders what could community leaders what could the conscious community and others do? Okay. First things first. Um, mentoring is definitely a, a, a key part. You know, being there, being present or whatnot. I mean, it doesn't... No, we're not asking anybody to be anybody's father. We're not even asking you to be anybody's uncle. But we're asking you to be there, to step up. Okay? Now, for example... If you, if you own a business and you have a trade, somebody's going to have to learn that. There's going to have to be some level of continuity mm -hmm. after you're gone. Yeah. So bestowing them with the talents, knowledge, abilities, and those tools and those wherewithal to learn plumbing. Okay, yes, maybe the child may not necessarily to go out there and be able to fully remodel somebody's house. But it it's... You know, giving them something positive and productive to do and something to hope for yeah, well is the, to beat within. I, I, agree, I agree with you. And, and, and when you look at the studies that have shown, and even out of the school that you've come out of, the University of Chicago did a study about young people in employment, right, and showed that when young people were working, when they, when they were access to jobs, temporary jobs, summer jobs, crime was down. That, that is just a fact. Mm -hmm. um, but I will even take it a step further. The federal government... Um, has this youth bill program where out of that came uh, it was putting young people to work but it was also putting parents to work we called it here in Illinois put Illinois to work it okay. was a, a it was a, a kind of a new deal type of program but it put people to work. They had something to do. And, you know, I was always raised by, by my grandmother that, that, you know, an idle mind is a, uh, a playground for the devil. So, yeah. you know, it, you, you have to have these young people engaged in something positive, right? And so when you look around our community, I mean, when is the last time you've seen the Boys and Girls Club? I mean, I'm not promoting either one. I, I'm uh, anybody I should say, but I'm just saying. When the last time you seen the Boys and Girls Club in the community? Um, the Park District is there, but it costs. And 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 this stage where you have parents who can barely just afford to make it to work with the wages that they're getting um, is very difficult. Now I'm not making any excuses for anyone, right? But when you look at the conditions of where our people come from and where they've been, well, you know, one has to begin to ask the question, you know. Have these is it a concerted effort to neglect these communities and to bring us to the place where we are today? Now, spiritually, I can have one answer, you know, but uh, I'm not in a spiritual mode here. I'm in a uh, secular mode by hosting uh, this television show, The Grand Boulevard Coalition. This is a live show. Our number is 312-738-1060. And uh, we're talking from a community perspective. And my guest is Mr. Amari Charles, who is a social worker, who's experienced in working with young people and prevented, and coming up with solutions and preventative measures of, of for the community and community engagement by way of working with parents and, um, and talking about mentoring and so many other things that could actually help um, someone um, from a clinical perspective. Um, and I believe we have a caller. Caller, you on the air. Yes. Good, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. How good are you, sir? Good, good evening. That X next to you is 100% right. But what happens is 13, 14, 
and you see what's happening in the neighborhood. Now, now, they just got another thing for the Chinese here to build. Multi, multi million dollar construction site. Not one African American, not one Hispanic construction company got a bid in. Now they open another one today for the uh, trauma center, and guess what? Not one African American, not one Hispanic construction uh, company got a bid. But wouldn't it be better if they would hire us just to keep our kids straight? When we were 13, 14, 15 years old, like the gentleman said, he sees his dad work every day, a mason, a carpenter, you know, a roofer, uh, uh, you know. He sees his dad go to work, comes home tired, and look what he has. He has most everything he wants or needs. That's the kind of home you want to come home to. Not a home with no dad. You know, to drugs. You know, that's, it, 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 and it's our fault. You know why? Because we keep putting the same people in the same office, the same alderman, you know, in their in their districts, and nothing's ever done. They all promise. Now, which one hasn't promised us uh, some more construction sites? They all promised. And how many did we get? One and that's a ninety-two. Well, and, and listen, and, and and I agree with you, and and thank you for your call, call. I certainly appreciate you. Um, and 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 as a rebuttal to your comment, I agree with you, Enamar, that uh, you know the skill trades is where it is. I've been involved with construction, uh, probably the last four or five months to an extent, um, and so it at, my eyes are very much open, uh, wide. Much more wider than they have been when you when you take a look at some of these major projects in the city, and you see that um, there's in most cases uh, they say this is a city that works for certain people, <laughs> uh, not for everybody. And and I would agree with you. Once you have a trade, it's something that you would never lose. And with so many vacant school buildings, um, you know. It, it, it is going to have to take some righteous indignation from people, elected officials, um, uh, the mayor, the governor, Congress folks, to bring these unions into the room and say, hey, listen, you know, we have project labor agreements, but you guys are going to have to open up a trade school, and we're going to have to begin to start sending some of these brothers and sisters into these trade schools and not just leaving them there with a pre-apprenticeship program and coming out holding a pre-apprentice certificate um, and can't find work, but a pipeline to work. Cranes are all in the air downtown, and we're getting ready to build the, 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 the second tallest building in the world, mm. which the mayor says is going to create uh, 2,000 jobs. You know, who, who, you know, if they're using TIF funds, that money is supposed to be for blighted communities. Well, I don't know any more <laughs> communities more blighted than the so-called black communities. Uh, so... I, I would agree with you on that, call. It you have a rebuttal, Mark? Yeah, I mean, I have uh, several points um, I would like to uh, make to that. I mean, yes, it is true. Once people, you know, are able to have um, a stable and long-term viable source of income in their household, then they're able to work on other aspects of themselves. You know, then they're able to grow and thrive, and not necessarily be in the uh, mentality of survival day to day, okay? When you're in the mentality of day to day survival, okay, there is no room for personal, spiritual, physical, or mental development, okay? And so, because you're living day to day, okay? And these are the conditions that, you know, um, unfortunately, a lot of the people are living in, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the Brother that just called in made the point that uh, you hear about the Chinese and, you know, other groups and stuff like that. No blacks are, are being hired. OK, now you might be shocked at my perspective of, of this, but I would say this. OK, and a lot of people may not necessarily be familiar with this, but in Chinatowns, if you look around and you look at most of the business there, there's not even anybody beyond the Chinese there. 
Okay? You're 100% correct. And so they have these associations set up, like the Chinese American Merchants Associations or the civic groups called Tongs because they found that collective action, collective individual action, okay, is what's been effective here in the United States as far as entrepreneurship, creating jobs, sending their students off to college with scholarships and stuff like that. So to a certain extent, I think that we have something to learn from them. Listen, I agree with you, um, uh, and, and you stay there for a moment. Okay. Uh, go to 18th Street. Go to 18th Street in Chicago from Halstead, from Halstead to Weston. And, 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 and you won't find one non-Hispanic business in that community. Go down 26th Street. I mean, they, they, and, 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 and the most outrageous thing, there's a chicken spot that sells chicken popular. That, and, and it is more black folks being let out of that <laughs> jail over there at 26th in California. But the folks that own the chicken place ain't black and, lock, and, and will lock the doors and won't let them in. When them Latinos on 26 in California and Sacramento get after them. I mean, I can tell you stories. The problem, we have no economic reality in mm -hmm. our community. You know, the black folks, we have an international belly. We, you know, everybody feeds us. I, I, we ain't got enough time for me to get on the rant. But you're right. You can't, we, no ethnic community. Right now in Greek town, there was a Greek business. That closed last Pegasus. week. Pegasus. Pegasus. Uh, yeah, Pegasus. Uh, not, not, not Pegasus. Pegasus is open. I go. I, I okay. sometimes frequent there. It's called. Um, I, I wanted. I should know the name because they 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 they're the place with the flaming cheese, man. They got oh. the cheese and it it flames up on you. I've sat there. They have great chicken. The chicken. Say anyway. Don't let me stop. My point <laughs> is this. Kind of making me hungry here. Yeah, <laughs> like they closed. Uh. They closed down uh, a week ago. Um, the Greek American Business Association bought the place. And said, we going to decide who's going to go in there. It's going to sit empty until we decide what business we're going to put in the building. And that's exactly so, what to I your mean point. by empowerment. Yeah, collective yeah, empowerment. Yeah. Now, people like to say, uh, you know, they like to use pejorative terms in regards to uh, communities that are ethnically uh, like that. And to me, I don't think that's quite the case. I mean, there's historical and cultural uh, means of preservation and importance to those areas. So, I mean, people like to say segregation and this, that, and the other. No, that's something to, you know, try to use to, oh, I want to get in on that buck and yeah. I want to find a way to kind of integrate and water down or whatnot. They, they're over there, they're taking care of their own, they have their dentists, their doctors, their herbalists or whatnot. And like I said, Maybe, just maybe, there is something that we can learn from them. Now, one thing I do know about those associations is whatever revenue they earn, whether it's monthly or however they do their accounting or whatever, a certain percentage of it goes to those associations. Right. And those associations have parades. They open senior homes. They uh, provide scholarships to the youth. Why can't we do that? Listen, we have the third largest black population in, 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 in the major cities across America. We have no grocery store to even put some of our young people to work. You're watching. This is the Grand Boulevard Coalition. Uh, this is our information on how you can reach us at 435 East 35th Street, Chicago, Illinois. Um, you can get us on Facebook at Grand Boulevard Coalition. Uh, Twitter. You know, and that's another thing. I, I, uh, anyway, Twitter at Grand Boulevard uh, 2. Instagram at Grand Boulevard Coalition, and you can reach us at 312-420-5582. Again, 312-420-5582 is a way that you can uh, reach us. I, I got to tell you, you know, it, it, tweet that out. But, I mean, you know, I, I've had so many people talk about, well, I got 200 followers, 300 followers. But what, following you where? What are you doing? Look at the state of our community. Look at where we are. Well, anyway, we, we got to get ready to wrap up. We, we're coming to a close. Do you have any closing comments? I know we kind of went all over the place, but yeah. it was very pointed conversation, so I, I certainly can appreciate you being here with me, Amari, today, having this discussion. But do you have any closing remarks? Okay, and, and thanks for the Grand Boulevard Coalition for hosting me today. Uh, what I like to say is that, you know, people do not take for granted your mental health as well as your spiritual health. 
or whatnot because things will manifest itself in the physical okay so you know just considering that however you think or whatever you think may be therapeutic whether it's sports whether it is you know uh, finding a mentor take care of you so that you could be able to um reach your true potential well listen it's been another great show thank you so much for watching uh all of you we really appreciate you between now and next week hey go cubs